bags are all checked. You want to say goodbye to Gregory? McIntyre calling Briarly. Bob, McIntyre from LaGuardia. She's locked up and just about to take off. He's on board, all right. Jonesy's keeping him company. Flight number 19, on stop to Pittsburgh. Teletype message for Crowley in Pittsburgh. Gerhard Eisler left LaGuardia aboard flight. Here you are, Johnny. Coffee, without sugar, and donut with sugar. Put Williams and Schwartz on the job. They work pretty well together. Any reply? No, thanks. Mason. What's on your mind, yeah? Take a look at this. Gerhard Eisler. For a man out on bail, he covers a lot of ground. He's evidently making a swing around the country, covering all the main branch offices of the party. Final visit, do you suppose? Could be. Get out to the airport and catch flight 19 when she comes in. Find out where he's stopping. He'll use a phony name, of course, but find out everything he can and report back here. Right. So Gerhard Eisler, communist agent, spy, convicted perjurer, was coming to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, the strong heart of America's industrial might, where the commies have planted themselves to throw that heart off beat. What have I got to do with this? Well, my name is Matt Savetic. Savetic is a Slovenian name. Lots of Slovenians in Pittsburgh. I was born here 38 years ago. My folks are real nice people. They came over to this country 40 years ago, became citizens, and raised a family of six kids. They've grown up now and have homes of their own. I hit it! You did not! I did so! You did not! I did so! I'm young for what I say, go! Says you! Hey, mister, did you see that? No, sorry, I missed it. Oh, you're a great hill. All right, back to the game and stop arguing. Oh, tough guy, tough guy, throw the ball. Bedroom curtains. Last year they were pink, the year before they were red. This year they're blue. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi, Matt. Hi, everybody. Matt. Hello, Mom. Happy birthday. I was sure you'd come. Well, who said I wouldn't? You look good, Mom. Real good. Doesn't she, Joe? Sure. That's what I've been telling her all day. Dick, what are you doing sitting over here all by your lonesome? Got a good word for your old man? Hi, Dad. Every time I see this guy, he's bigger than the last time. That's because you don't see him very often. I know. I haven't had a chance. I've been busy. So I've heard. How things at school? Okay. You know, one of these days I'm going to ask to see a report card. Yeah, I bet. Mom, you must be mighty proud with all your big sons around today, huh? So would your father be proud if he could be here? <laughs> you take the draft board to bring them all together now. Yeah, that's true enough. We don't get together very often. Perhaps it's just as well. You're doing all right, Mom. That's a lot of loot. Thanks for the beautiful robe, Matt. But it's kind of fancy for an old lady. Father Novak asked about you, Matt. He wondered what happened to you. He knows what happened to him. Oh, come on, fellas. Let's not argue. Mom's birthday. Oh, that's all right, sis. They're only trying to kid me. Don't let it bother you. I'll get it. Well, aren't you guys going to ask me to have a beer? Would you rather have beer or dinner? Dinner? <laughs> yeah, that's for me, too. That's all right. I can take care of it. Dad. 
A man wants you on the phone. Who is it? You wouldn't say. I'll be right with you. I hope we hook a lot, Mom. You know my appetite. That's a vetic. This is Blandon speaking. Why do you call me here? I thought I told you to... Never mind that now. Mr. Eisler's in town, and we've called a special meeting for tonight. He wants to see you before it starts, so get over to the State Hotel as quickly as you can. The name you ask for is J.B. Williams. I'll be right over. So you're going to duck Mom's party? I've got to. Don't try to lie to her. She'll see through you. As it is, she's ashamed to admit you're a son. She'll never be ashamed of me. Get out of this house and don't you ever come back. You can't tell me that, you slimy red. James 97003. Hello, let me talk to Crowley. Mr. Crowley? Uh, who wants him? Braddock. Just a moment, please. Mr. Crowley? Yeah. A man named Braddock wants to speak to you. Put him on. This is Crowley. I just got word that Gerhard Eisel is in town. They called a special meeting for tonight. Yeah, we know he's here. You'll be at the meeting tonight, of course. Yeah, sure. I'm going to his hotel first. I've never met him, you know. Call me after the meeting. Not at this office. Call the cruising number and I'll pick you up in my car. Anything else? No, that's all. Right. Bye. to get used to it, Savetic. That's the way we're all going to live once we take the country over. Uh-huh. The workers, too? The workers will still be the workers. The trouble with you, you're too much of a fanatic. Who is a fanatic? Savetic. Oh, Mr. Eisler, Matt Savetic. Well, it's good to meet a fanatic now and then. But at the same time, we must be realistic. Thanks. Comrade Stanton. Mr. Svetik, I've heard some good things about you. Your parents are Slovenian, I believe. Yes, sir. According to reports, you've brought hundreds of your Pittsburgh nationals into the party. Svetik works in the personnel department of the North American Steel Company. He does quite a bit of hiring and firing. Yes, the hiring of party members and the firing of non-members. That's excellent. The National Committee has decided to reward you, Svetik. Peters has been transferred, and uh, you will take his place as chief party organizer for the District of Pittsburgh. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Reisler. I consider that a great honor. This section produces more steel than all the rest of the country put together. Move Pittsburgh an inch, and we can move this country a mile. But, uh, Pittsburgh is too quiet, too peaceful. To bring about the victory of communism in America, we must incite riots, discontent, open warfare among the people. That is the purpose of tonight's meeting. Oh, it's getting late. 
You better get going and start the meeting. Yes, sir. We'll join you later. To the Soviet Union. Some caviar? See, this hall is only partially built tonight, folks. I'd like to see it filled to capacity because I want to help you people. Now, I have a few simple questions I'd like to ask you. Yes, as Gerhard Eisler said, Pittsburgh was too quiet, too peaceful. So they cooked up a hell brew of hate from a recipe written in the Kremlin. It was the same old line they'd used for years on all racial minorities to create unrest and confusion. See, I'm not a member of this party. I came to hear what you had to say. And I hear gross overstatements. Oh, like other communist traitors, Blandon had been trained in Moscow. There are more ways than one to sabotage the safety of a country. The one he used was as dangerous as blowing up defense plants. It was the old rule of divide and conquer. Yeah. A very enjoyable evening. Close the door. Blandon, you did exceedingly well. <laughs> Thanks. Those niggers ate it up, didn't they? Mm -hmm. You mean Negroes, don't you, Jim? Only when I'm trying to sell them the party line. They're very useful comrades. <laughs> comrades? There's going to be trouble on the streets tonight. Well, if there isn't, I've been wasting the party's time. Anyone want a drink? Do you mind? Go ahead. Comrades. Comrades. You know, Matt calls them comrades, too, only he believes it. You see, Matt, if one of that crowd goes out into the street tonight and picks a fight with a white man and, well, kills him, maybe, then he gets convicted by a white jury, we can go to bat and raise a defense fund. Am I correct, Mr. Reisler? Mm-hmm. Just like in the Scottsboro case. Exactly. Do you know that the party raised nearly two million? Yes, nearly two million dollars just to defend those six niggers. And all it cost was 65,000. To lose the case. Right. Yes, we made a tremendous profit in that deal. Shall I tell them what was done with it? No, 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 Blandon. I am afraid the National Committee wouldn't like that. In other words, Jim, your speech had a double purpose. Right, boy, Matt. The Pittsburgh branch needs dough. We're always in the red. <laughs> well, gentlemen, let's call it a night. Right. Yeah, I could use some sleep. Come on, get in, Matt. Got plenty of room. No, thanks. I'm going to grab a cab. Good night, Mr. Reiser. Good night. Good night. Harmon. Taylor. Right. Don't you trust your new party organizer? Do we trust anybody? Mm, not too much. But what's 3,000 bucks to a guy like me? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Say, fill it up, will you? Sure? Say, honey, why don't you buy me a little drink, huh? Later, huh? Later. Always later. Oh, hello. This is Braddock calling cruise number LD790. Thank you. LZ790. Come in, please. Braddock calling. That's him. So, a few years later, I bought a few stocks from 
fine. Oh, please, let's not go into that. Okay, lady, okay. Hi, Matt. Who are you calling? <laughs> Hello, baby. Oh, come on, baby. You got a car? Tell me where you'll pick me up. Okay, Toots. Foot of sixth, Joe's cigar store. I'll be swell. Bye, baby. Goodbye, dear. Boy, what I got waiting for me. Relaxation, huh? Who said it? And do I need it? See you. Well, that's all I can remember. I'll go home and write it up. Maybe something else will come to me. That's the way they started the race riots in Detroit in 43. And the riots in Harlem that same year when five Negroes were killed. Those poor fellows never knew their death warrants had been signed in Moscow. The worst of it is we can't do a thing about it. Did Isley drop any hint as to how long you'll be in Pittsburgh? No, oh, no, not a word. I'll contact you when I find out. Pull over at the next corner, Mason. You better take my coat, Matt. No, thanks. I'll get a bus. Break it up. Let's go. Back to work, you fellas. All right, let's go. Looks like the guy's gonna lose his arm. Too bad. What happened? Carelessness? Not his carelessness. He's an expert at that job. I got another guy all set for it. Carson. Yeah? Take over. Okay. The guy that got hurt doesn't carry a party card. Carson does. I see. <laughs> Woman called while you were out. Oh. A Miss Scott, principal of the school your son goes to. Anything wrong with the boy? She didn't say. I'll be back as soon as I can. Mr. Savetic, we've been having a lot of trouble with this boy of yours. He's been in one fight after another, and today's affair resulted in the other student being sent home with a broken nose. What were you fighting about, son? That's the kind of answer we've been getting. Perhaps if uh, we leave Mr. Savetic alone with him, it would be better. Maybe so. You excuse us? Thank you. One thing more, Mr. Savetic. You understand, if this doesn't stop, I shall have to take him before the board. I don't want to do that. Yes, I understand. Uh, what's it all about, son? You ought to know. I don't know. Come on, let me in on it. I haven't seen much of you since I went to live with Granny. Every time I ask her about you, a tear comes in her eye. She starts talking about something else. I'm no dope. I know what people say, but I won't believe it. 
toughest part. It's the razzing I have to take in at school. What about? It's your economy. A red. Every time one of them says it, I take a swing at him. Listen, Dad, I think it's about time you and I had a showdown. What are you going to do, Dick? Try to tell me how to think? You're a little young for that. I'm close to draft age. Guys as young as I am are going to have to go fight this thing. They say you're mixed up in it. Oh, now, wait a minute, Dick. I can't let you interfere with my political beliefs. Don't give me that line. Dad, tell me the truth, will you? Are you a red or not? All right, I'll tell you the truth. I'm a member of the Communist Party. And I have been for nine years. When I was a kid, about nine or ten, I used to tell myself I wanted to grow up to be like my dad. Before I do that now, I drop dead. Oh, wait a minute, Keep son. Keep your hands off me. Don't ever come near me again. Very good. Oh, Mr. Svetty. I'm Dick's teacher. Oh. I like the boy. Now keep an eye on him. Yeah, he's a good kid. If, uh, if ever you want to know how he's getting on, don't hesitate to call me. It's very kind of you. And uh, don't feel too badly. It'll straighten out in time. Well, thank you, Miss... Uh... Merrick. Eve Merrick. your mind. You'd better be back home by 12 o'clock tonight. And if I ain't? And if you ain't, I won't be here when you do get back. That's the best news I've heard all year. Hey, Mr. Savetti, wait a minute. Hiya, Jackie. What's on your mind? Remember you were showing me how butt would bat? Yes. Well, I tried it out today. It didn't work. No kidding. No kidding. Works for the big legs. I don't know why it doesn't work for you. I don't know either. Now show me what you did, huh? Okay. Well, I stood over the plate like this. Yeah. And caught it. Well, no wonder. Hey, let me in. Huh? Okay. Okay, watch me. You stand over there, huh? Sure. Now watch. Stand at the plate like this, see? Sure. Hold your bat this way, right? Right. Good. Keep your eye on the pitcher, right? Right. And when he winds up, square around, right? Right. And bunt. Got it? I think so. <laughs> sure you have. Jackie, come inside. Okay, Pop. I'm sure I got it this time, Mr. Savetti. I'll see you. Thanks, Pop. Okay, sure. You're welcome. Hey, Savetti. I thought I told you to stay away from my kid. I was only showing him something about baseball. Baseball's an American game. I can show him that without your help. Dear son, 
This letter will be left in care of Father Novak, our parish priest. And if anything should happen to me, he will put it in your hands. He is the only man outside of the FBI who knows that I am doing undercover work for our government. How I wanted to tell you that today, then I might have seen something else in your eyes besides heartache and contempt. But I am helping to fight a dark and dangerous force, and if one word of the truth got out, it could mean not only the end of me, but perhaps of better men who take the same chance as I do every day. I'm not blaming you, son. I was proud of you. That's one thing I want you always to remember. If your conscience tells you a thing is right, always stand up for it. Save this letter in case I'm not here to talk to you and remember what I'm saying. For it is for your own good and because I love you so much. If I do go, you'll know the last thought I had on earth was of you and my mother. Be good and God bless you both. Dad. Just a minute. May I come in? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. You mind if I sit down? No, please do. Did Dick tell you where I live? No, I, I didn't come to see you about him. I came to see you about me and you. I've known for a long time where you live. I have a friend who's assistant to the financial secretary, Midtown Branch, Communist Party. And she has access to the membership files, and I wormed your address out of her. Uh-huh. I've seen you lots of times in meetings. That's so. You haven't seen me. I keep pretty much in the background. I like your speeches. They're so sincere, so straight from the heart. Well, I'm glad I convinced you of that. You don't have to wear that poker face. I'm not dangerous. Here are my credentials. So you're a member? Mm-hmm. Who sent you here? Nobody sent me. I wanted to talk to you. I know you were hurt today, and I thought maybe you might need a friend. Don't you believe that? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, how can you, as a teacher, be a member of the party? What about your loyalty oath to the government? My oath to uphold the constitution of the Communist Party is more important. I, I'd swear to anything in order to spread the truth about our cause. And what better field could I find to work in than a high school? Well, that's true. Tell me. You've been successful? Reasonably so. Didn't have much luck with my kid. I haven't started on him yet. You leave him alone. He's a stubborn kid. I want him to find out the truth for himself. No, thank you. Steel is my racket. I don't know very much about yours. Tell me. We have many teachers working in the schools in Pittsburgh? The teachers section of the party branch I belong to has about 30 women in it. Mm-hmm. All of them as attractive as you? That's the idea, isn't it? Not in my book. Why not? Moscow says everything is permitted. Most of our girls... That's where I differ from Moscow. If that's heresy, make the most of it. Got a mind of your own, huh? Something. You don't like me, do you? Look. I came here because I thought you were lonely. I'm lonely, too. Remember that if you ever change your mind.
The arsenal of democracy until we lower the boom. Now, here's North American Steel, and this concerns you, Matt. Before Mr. Eisler left here, we went over this whole setup, and we're really going to cripple this joint. Now, we'll need a man on the hoist in the scrapyard each shift, night and day. That's not going to be easy. You better settle for one. I'll settle for two. And you get over to Union Hall and put a little heat on. Get them in there fast. A little heat? <laughs> well, I got two comrades on the board. The CIO's trying to get them out right now. If they start throwing their weight around, I'll lose them both at the next election. I don't want arguments. I want action. Any suggestions, Matt? We better move a man into the drafting room so we can get duplicates of each new pattern. They're making a change in the top armor of the patent M26 tanks. I just picked that up. I'm like keeping my ears open. I'll check on it tomorrow, but we need a man in there. Nice work. That's better reception than we got before. Thanks to Matt Savetic. It was our idea, but he installed it. You better hear the last of this, Ken. It's interesting. What you'll hear now took place at the end of their meeting. This should be about the place. That's all, Matt. Go on home and get some sleep. Yeah, I need it. I've been working day and night. You've taken on a big job, Chief Party Organizer. Yeah, and a lot of new headaches. Every night before I go to sleep, I look under the bed. Why? Are you kidding? What does it say in the manual? It is the duty of all comrades to keep close watch on members assuming the role of leadership and to report their every deviation from the party line. Who's watching you, Blandon? Could be you, Matt. Could be. He's right. Is somebody checking on Matt? Yeah. A school teacher. A tasty little dish. Come on. Let's go home. That's it. Contact Savetic. Tell him to meet us at Willard's Warehouse near the Allegheny Bridge. Oh, she's checking on me. Do all comrades check on each other? What do you want me to do? Take advantage of the situation. Get me a list of all the subversive teachers here in Pittsburgh, and I'll see that they're eased out. We'll take our time on Miss Merrick, or you'll be suspected. Cultivator, but don't go overboard. Smarter guys than you have been tripped up by a dame. She won't trip me up. I'll contact you. I didn't come to see you. I come to tell you Granny's sick. The doctor says she's dying. Everybody's at the house. They've called Father Novak. She was asking for you. Come on, let's go. Here you are. Bye. Well, how's Mom? Dick said she was asking for me. Yeah, she was asking for you. Is it all right if I go to her now? Go if you want to. She's upstairs in her room. Hello, Matt. Hello, Father. Uh, where are you going? To Mom. She wants to see me. You're too late, son. Your mother's gone. Thanks for coming, Jim, and thanks for the flowers. Yeah, red roses. <laughs> That's quite a show they put on in there. I saw you kneeling with those other sheep. What else could he do? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Were you praying with the rest of them? Prayers aren't going to help my mother now, Jim. Oh, Matt, I want to see you before you go. Uh, be careful, Matt. You're in danger of losing your soul. I'll see you in town. 
Would you excuse us, please? Certainly. Matt, knowing I would see you here today, I brought this with me. It's the letter you gave me for your son. I've suddenly been called to Rome, and I think you'd better find another place for that. Thanks, Father. I will. And if I don't see you again, goodbye and God bless your son. Thanks, Father. that back to your communist friends. What do you mean, bringing them to Mom's funeral? I've been waiting a long time for this. Put up your hands. I said, put up your hands, you dirty red. Get on your feet. On your feet. You dirty no good. Stop it, stop it. What kind of a man are you fighting on a day like this? Have you no respect for your mother? He had it coming to him, Father. Don't give me that. I saw what happened. I saw Joe hit him, and he didn't even try to fight back. His red pals were there in the cemetery making fun of the services. We saw them. Go on about your business. Go on. One of these days, you'll regret what you've done. Mad man alive, why don't you tell them? Tell them and be done with it. Tell them what, Father? I'm a communist, and I'm proud of it. Yes, I see what you mean. Sure. May I help you? You Beethoven's Emperor Concerto. The long playing? No, standard red label. These booths are filled, but we have another booth in the back room. Thank you. Sorry to hear about your mother, Matt. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Listen, Matt. Now, look, you listen to me. You know, now I know what they mean about a guy in prison going stir bucks. You know, I'm in prison. I served nine years. Nine years of putting on an act I hate and being hated for doing it. Something happened at headquarters? Oh, no, no. At headquarters, they still think I'm a louse who'll sell out his own people. You know, you guys have a home and a family. When your day's work is done, you go home to them, and they're glad to see you. I've got nothing but a bunch of slimy commies who cut my throat and throw me in the river when they're through with me. Look, Ken, you got to get me out of this thing. You got to wipe this red smear off me. I can't take it any longer. I don't know what's got into me. I don't want to feel this way, but I can't help it. You can quit, Matt. The clearing your name is something else. Once you join the Bureau, you're on your own. Once a red plant goes sour, we do everything we can for him. But publicly, we have to disown him. You know that. Yeah, I know it. Well. Here's something maybe more important. I wrote a letter to my son to be delivered in the event of my death. Yesterday at my mother's funeral, I had a fight with my brother Joe. When I got home, the letter was gone. What was in it? The truth about what I'm doing. I went back to the spot where the fight took place, and it wasn't there. 
Somebody must have found it. I hope it wasn't Eve Merrick. She was with me. Then perhaps you'll be interested in this recording. We picked it up right after the funeral. You'll recognize these voices. First one is Blandon's. What did the priest have to say to Matt after we left the cemetery? He told him he was going to Rome, and he begged him to give up communism. That all? Matt said he was proud of what he was doing. He's loyal to the party, almost too loyal. How he could stand there and take that beating out. <laughs> He's had good training. Oh, by the way, Matt wants me to work the picket line during the strike at North American. Is that okay with you? Why not? We're going to turn out our full strength. The more women on the line, the better. If Eve had the letter, she'd have told him. Seems so. Yeah, that's right. Look, Ken. I want to go on living in a country where you can walk around with your head up. Where you can talk back to cops and where you can holler out loud and print. Where the secret police will be dragging you out of your bed at four o'clock in the morning. Sound like corn? Not to me. Ken, forget about what I asked you. I'm staying on the job. He's quite a guy. Yeah. We not only demand an increase in wages, but an increase in the Manning scale, the welfare program, maintain the hiring hall. And this is most important, because the hiring that hall... That night at the Union Hall, the commies used the same plan of campaign that has put them in power time and again. A couple of their own men on the executive board, a couple on the floor, a small group of specialists trained to out-talk, out-last, and out-maneuver the union members who had come there to cast an honest vote. The listeners were tired men who had put in a heavy day at a steel plant. That was the idea, a filibuster of yakety-yak to wear us down and get rid of us. The hours walked around the clock. All this had been rehearsed many times at party headquarters. Midnight, one o'clock. Two. At three in the morning, they were ready to make their move. Harmon called for a token strike, a one-day vacation. And that was all the party needed. Ah, that's good. Good. Very good. Yeah, the boys did a swell job on them. I like them. I like them all. Uh, Dobbs? Yeah. Look. I want you to see that the big signs are put in the hands of the union workers. Give our own women the small stuff and tell them, tell them to yell their heads off. Have you got them organized? Yeah, they'll be there dressed as union workers' wives, like you said. Miss Onovich, I want you in the sound truck. Give them the same old stuff that you gave them at the dock strikes in New York. Gotcha. You better get going. Right. Hey, you're late. I'm sorry, I had to pick up Eve. You said you got a special assignment for her? Yeah, yeah, I have. How do you like this for a dish of cream? I like. All right, sweetheart, now listen. I want you to pass one of those out to each of the workers and give each man out there a nice big hello and a smile. If they make any passes at you, don't get sore. You know what I mean. Matt, look what I've got for you. Hey, you guys, come in here. A special importation to comrades from New York. This is Matt Savetic. You'll report to him when you get out to North American Steel. He'll tell you when to go to work and who to work on. These are the tools that you'll work with. I want you to wrap each one in newspaper, just like this. Kind of neat, huh? Innocent bystanders, each with a newspaper in his pocket. Now, what could be sweeter? But those are all Jewish newspapers. Well, sure. What about it? Does it bother you? No, but, but won't people think... She doesn't know very much about our branch of the work. She's got a lot to learn. I'll meet you guys at the plant near the main gate. I'll brief you then. Anything else? Yeah. Get pinched if you have to, but don't get hurt. I need you. Start your line past the main gate just before the morning shift comes on. Okay. Let's go. But those are all Jewish newspapers. What's wrong with that dame? 
Who knows? That married gal seems to have an ailing conscience. I didn't know she had one. She might need a little watching. Hold that line, friend. Don't let any would-be scab get through those gates. We're here to help you get your rights. And the only way you can get them is by a show of strength. Now take it easy. There's no need to run. Just hold that line. Looks like the union officers. Get away from me, you rat. What are you doing here? You don't work for North America. No, but some of the screwballs from my outfit listen to you skunks, and they're in that line. Joe, go on home. Get out of it. Who started this picket line? Where'd you get that sign? Some guy gave it to me. Said it came from the hall. What's the matter with you? Can't you read? Get rid of those guys trying to break up the picket line. Look, what he means is get in there and go to work on them. Start breaking their skulls. Go on. Check. Let's go, fellas. We don't want any part of that. The commies started this thing, and we don't want any part of it. No member of our union want anything to do with anything they... You talk too much. S T W A R T. Work on the plant? Yes, I am. I'm a timekeeper. You see the fight start? Yes, I did. Thanks a lot. Very well. The union chairman and three members of the board sent to the hospital. Yeah, that's a pretty good day's work. Maybe you better get out of here before the cops come nosing around. I'll see you later. I thought you might like to know your brother may live. Brother? Which one? Joe. He's over there in that ambulance. Well, how do you like that? I don't like it. I don't like any part of what happened here today. That's treason. Just a minute. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Just because a couple of chumps got their head bashed in, you're going to blow your top? In Moscow, you'd be liquidated for making such a statement. I'm not in Moscow. I'm in Pittsburgh, and I can still say what I think. It's right to fight for what we believe in. But why can't we do it in the open? And, and why have we got to blame it on others? All that bothers you is that we pinned it on the Jews? Sure, we pinned it on them. Jews, Catholics. Till we get them all fighting with each other and tearing each other's throats out, how do we expect to defeat them and establish a Soviet America? Matt, I've got to talk to you. I don't you. want to talk to you till you straighten out your thinking. Here are my keys. Take it to her apartment. Disloyalty to the party is a serious offense. Till you get some sense in your skull, you keep your mouth shut. Your secretary heard her say that. Yeah. And you've got to get your report into Blandon. You've got to get your report in first. Yeah, I know that, but if I do, Eve will... I know she'll be in trouble. Comrade Gilly of Heresies reported to the National Review Commission. They use the same methods as the Soviet secret police. I'm afraid she'll make another blunder. It may be an act. She may be testing you. I don't think so. Anything happens to Eve, I'll never forgive myself. We'll take care of her. But you get your report into Blandon today. Okay. Hello. 
all, Ben. Oh, Jim. It goes on. To get these pamphlets ready for distribution tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Run into Eve and ask her to come up and help me. It's a good idea. We can always depend on Eve. Yeah, she's a good kid. Mind if I open this window? It's getting hot in here. No, I'll leave it alone. It's all right as it is. Who left this file unlocked? I'm afraid I did. We've got to protect our membership list these days. We're not the Communist Political Association any longer. Here, put that in the safe and lock it up. Too many of our top men have gone on the stand and spilled their guts lately. We don't know who we can trust. You know, the boys and I were just talking about you. You tell her, Matt, it's your idea. I hate to do this, but it's my duty. I think you should be dropped from the party. You do? Why? You haven't got what it takes to be a communist. North American steel strike was your first real test, and you flunked it. Why did you join the party in the first place? Why? Yeah. I'll tell you why. Because I thought communism was an intellectual movement. A movement toward true freedom. And so it is. <laughs> Look, Mr. Blandin. Since you put me on the spot, you may as well know that I've been completely disillusioned. I found out that its only object is to gain complete control of every human mind and body in the world. Communism is a mockery of freedom. You know what it means to be dropped with a party? Look, don't bother to drop me, because I'm out right now. I've been out since the day of the strike. Tomorrow I'm going to the school board. I'm going to tell them what I am and what I've done. I'll name every teacher who carries a party card. Good night, comrades. Let her go. If she names the teachers in the party, they'll bust this town wide open. She won't name any teachers. I can stop her. You do that, Matt. Eve. Eve, I want to talk to you. You turned me in. I had to. You know that. But I didn't turn you in. I should have the way I thought then. But I couldn't. Do you know why, Matt? I suppose you knew I was checking on you. I didn't hold it against you. The entire National Executive Committee is constantly being watched. You know, Matt, it, it wasn't the strike alone that opened my eyes. I think I began to change when I read your letter. Eve, the best thing you can do is give up your teaching job and say nothing. We have the names of the subversive teachers and their records. It isn't healthy for you to stay around Pittsburgh. You better get out of town, lay low for a while. All right, I'll start packing tomorrow. Not tomorrow, tonight. I have so much to do, I... Just take what you need, leave your apartment as it is. Have you got any money? Yes, I have enough. Will I see you again? Not until my work is finished. Party's jittery, everybody's suspect. We better not be seen together. We can keep in touch, though. you in the apartment in a couple of minutes. You get packed. I'll drive you to the station. All right. Well, is there a way to the alley? Yes, to that door. Matt, do you really think that they... Look, I've made a lot of mistakes in nine years, but they've taught me to be cautious. Hurry up.
It's in her apartment. What about Sovetic? She's gone. All right, wait till she puts the light out, then get up there and finish it. Now, don't bungle it. Okay. There's so much I'll have to leave here. Well, never mind. We gotta hurry if we're gonna catch the train. This is the alley. Yeah. They ought to be bringing her out pretty soon. I think I'll take a look. Hands up and I'll tell you all about it. What's this all about? You haven't got anything on us. No, nothing. Breaking and entering? Suspicion of an armed robbery. I think we got enough for the police to hold you for a while. That's how guys get killed.
Wait here. those two men found on the tracks. They haven't been identified yet. That's not going to be easy, not with what happened to them. Blanda knows that Eve is gone. I told him I took her to her apartment last night, and then I haven't seen her since. Where is she? She's in a hotel in Bergen. I thought you told me you were going to take care of her. Matt, we tried. Jim Broderick, one of our agents, was planted in the apartment across the hall from the one she occupied. Well, then why didn't we he... We found him this morning in Eve Merrick's apartment. Dead. And it must have been Harmon or Masonovich who did it. I saw them both coming up the stairs. Well, you're our only witness. But we can't put you on the stand. Not yet. We'll have to keep it quiet till you're free to testify. Look, one of the big shots from East 12th Street hit town this morning. I know. Clyde Garson. He's got some new directives from the Kremlin. Blandon's called a meeting for tonight. We'll be listening in. Yeah, but this meeting is going to be held in Garson's suite at the State Hotel. Why don't we wire the suite? We might be able to do that. There's a convention at the hotel, Shriners. The place is alive with them. That may help. <laughs> All right, fellas, quiet down, will you? Quiet down. I want you to listen to this. That's Blandon. Meeting's underway again. Comrades, I don't need to tell you that the Un-American Activities Committee is becoming a danger to us. The hearings it's conducting in Washington are bad counter-propaganda. Moscow has ordered a nationwide campaign. And you division leaders of the Pittsburgh branch are to pass this on to your members. All communists are to spread the word that the Un-American Activities Committee is a group of fat-headed politicians whose only aim is to crash the headlines. We want them laughed at, ridiculed. If we start the ball rolling, there are plenty of big mouth suckers in this country who'll do the rest. <laughs> You know, there's one thing that bothers me. Eleven of the leaders of our party are on trial in the city of New York before a federal judge. They're fighting for our liberty as well as their own. What are we doing for them? What about their defense fund? Oh, I think we're doing plenty. We met our quota, didn't we? We met our quota, but it's not enough. We've got to double it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. You know, Matt's right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the extra dough has to come out of our pockets. Why, Pittsburgh is rich. Let Pittsburgh make up the deficit. Look, I think I got an idea. You, Raider, don't you still live out in that German section? Sure. Well, let's just suppose that for a while you forget your communism. Start another Nazi Bund. Me, a fascist? No, comrade. A phony, a phony fascist, I mean. Needle your neighbors, feed them the Fritz Kuhn line. They wouldn't believe me. They believed you 10 years ago. Look, comrade. Sometimes the communist must turn his coat for the good of the cause. Now, didn't Comrade Stalin join with Hitler in 39? Organize your neighbors. Call them black shirts, gray shirts, anything you want. Hold parades, make speeches. Yeah, make speeches against the church. All churches, all minorities. You get what I mean? Yeah. Good. 
That'll stir up a few people. And once the people are stirred up, they'll make contributions to fight this new menace. That's great, Jim. Great stuff. Yeah. Look, Clyde, why can't we rent an auditorium and put on a big rally? Get some top speakers, you know, top speakers that'll really draw. Maybe a couple of those sacred cows. Let them howl their heads off about the rape of the First Amendment. Sounds good to me. Better send a note to our cultural division. Tell them we need a brace of pinko chumps for a front. Why, we'll pack the hall at five bucks a throw. <laughs> Great idea, John. All right, all right, man. Now Clyde Garson's got good news for you. Comrades, I want to prepare you for the fact that any day the North Koreans may cross the 38th parallel and invade South Korea. The first step in our march to victory. When that happens, we put on a new front. We won't talk like communists then. We'll be worried citizens. Worried about the administration, finding fault with our military leaders, whispering in every ear about the terrible power of the Soviet, spreading doubt, fear, defeatism. That'll be our job, comrades, to soften up the people, to moralize them, weaken the will of America to fight. Then when comrade Stalin calls the play, the panic of the American people will mean power and glory for us all. all I want to see Jim. All right. Uh, sure. 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 Jim, better read this. We'll be all right. I'm sorry I misunderstood you regarding the donation. You're absolutely right. That's perfectly all right. That's all for now, gentlemen. Good night. Found dead on the railroad tracks. What happened? What were they doing there? I don't know. Do you? What are you getting at? How would I know? I don't know that either, but I'm going to find out. We're going over to headquarters right away. You're going with us. It's all right with me. I'll make a report out on this right away. This is local business, Clyde. Okay. You tell me you were trying to kill her. So you could tip her off? You did tip her off, didn't you, Matt? No. Now, where is she? I told you, I don't know. Have you tried to contact her today? I called her apartment. She's not in. You're not worried, Matt. Not enough. Why? Why should I be worried about a traitor? Look, when you told me this morning that you dropped her off at her apartment, then went home to bed, I believed you. Didn't these two guys tell you they saw me leave? That's why I believed you. I thought the other two had finished the job and that I'd hear from them. But when I read in the paper that they were found dead, I knew something was cockeyed. Why wasn't Merrick in her apartment? You know more about that than and I And why was there an FBI guy planted up there? Was there anything on him to prove he was FBI? No, but what else could he be? If you thought that dame had one chance to save her skin and you let her get away with it, you're a traitor. You know what happens to traitors? Trotsky thought he was safe, but they got to him. Jan Masaryk was dropped out of a window in Prague. They called it suicide. And did you know that General Kravitsky was found dead in his Washington hotel? Yeah, and that was called suicide, too. Hundreds of comrades who made one little mistake here in America have paid for it with their lives. You see, I slipped up on Merrick, but you? No, I can't take a chance on you. So come on, open up. Talk. Open up. You're crazy, Blandon. Right. Keep those goons away from me. Go to work on this. Comrades, don't you get along together? Hey, what do you want? Which one of you is Matt Sibetic? I am. I've got news for you, comrade. They want you over at headquarters. What is this, an arrest? What do you think? What's the charge? Suspicion of murder. Who did I kill? You don't know, huh? Well, just to jog your memory, James Broderick, an agent for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, was found dead this morning in your sweetheart's apartment. Your fingerprints were all over the place. Got any information to the contrary? No. That's what I thought, you stinking red. On your way. Take it easy, you old head son. You know something? We could be wrong. Yeah. Mitch, this is Jim. Now look, Matt Savetic's just been picked up on suspicion of killing an FBI agent. I don't know what evidence they've got, but it can't be much. So get out of red and spring them as soon as you can. 
Let me know what goes on. All right. Yeah, we could be wrong, but we'll take no chances. Mason was listening in on the recorder, and he heard what happened at the end of the meeting. He called me, said you were in trouble. I was, but that murder rap was worse. I believed it until I saw you. You can believe it. You'll read about it in the papers. You mean they're going to hold me Hear for the, the murder? Hear the rest of it, Matt. You've been called to testify at the trial of the 11 commie leaders in New York. The evidence you've collected will convict them before any jury in the country. You're getting off the hook at last. Oh, thank God. I can crawl out of my rat hole and live like a man. In the meantime, you'll be safer in jail. They gave you a rough deal, huh? Oh, forget it. I've been able to catch up on my sleep here in the week. Yeah. Look, I only got a minute. I just wanted you to know that we've been working for you ever since they locked you up. The DA's office wanted to hold you for the grand jury, but we blocked that deal cold. This morning, our lawyers got out a writ of habeas corpus based on insufficient evidence. Well, kid, you're on your way out. Now? This afternoon, about 3 o'clock. I'll pick you up then. You know, Matt, I was thinking... You gotta get out of town for a while. So why don't you run over to New York and help out with the trial? Yeah, I might be able to help at that. Oh, sure, sure you would. You know, I've been a regular commuter myself. I was telling the boys on East 12th Street how you took this rap and kept your mouth shut. Matt, you're a fine example of loyalty to the party. You got a lot of guys like me in the party. Only you don't know it. See you. Yeah. the commie leaders in New York City set off a series of red riots that spread from Harlem to the Battery. Fighting boss. Boss work. All set. I ought to be. I've gone over my testimony with the USDA a dozen times. That stuff has burned into my brain. I'll be out there when your name's called. Can you imagine what a shock that'll be to the commies? They'll tear the benches apart. I expect that. The defense will do their best to break you down, to smear you in the eyes of the jury. That's been their method with every prosecution witness. The court will be packed with your enemies. But don't forget the millions of Americans who will be listening in. They'll be on your side. Yeah, I know. And I'm going to be talking to my brothers and to that boy of mine. I'm going to be telling them what I've wanted to tell them over and over again. I'm not a traitor. I'm not a heel. I love the same things they do. I want to see them just once without hate in their eyes. They ready for me? No, they aren't. U.S. District Attorney sent me to tell you your testimony won't be needed. Won't be needed? You mean I've gone through this for nothing? No, you haven't. Now, why did they give me the big build-up? These days and nights of preparation. Why did they find out about it before they sent for me? Haven't I gone through enough without that kind of a kick in the face? How much do you think a guy can take? Now, wait a minute. Listen to me. The work you've done is more important than the conviction of these men. They've convicted themselves. But the facts you've uncovered are vital to the safety of our country. All right, that's swell. But I'm still a commie. For the time being, yes. We have more surprises for the Reds, but we aren't quite ready to show our hand. We want you to go on working with the party. But under no circumstances must they know you came here to testify. We're counting on you, Matt. Okay. I'll try to stick it up. Tell the DA it was fun while it lasted. I'll take it, comrade. Sit down and rest yourself. Thanks. 
Hi, Matt. How's it going inside? Like a three-ring circus. I've been looking for you. Yeah? I was in Pittsburgh this morning. Before I left for the airport, I dropped by the office and found a United States Marshal waiting for me. This will give you a laugh, Matt. We're summoned to appear before the Un-American Activities Committee in Washington. That include me? All the top men of the Pittsburgh division. Don't let it bother you, Matt. We'll give them the same runaround that the rest of the comrades give them. Stand on your constitutional rights. Read them a prepared statement. I don't need any prepared statement. I know what I'm going to say. I've been rehearsing it for nine years. All right, boys, break it up. Keep moving. Mr. Harmon, perhaps you didn't understand the question. Sure I do. But I refuse to answer the question for fear it might incriminate me. At the moment, there is no law against being a member of the Communist Party. The First Amendment prohibits the Congress from forcing any witness to answer any such question. Are you a member or have you been a member of the Communist Party? Answer yes or no. I have here a prepared statement which will show that... We have no time to listen to propaganda. Answer the question or you'll be held in contempt. <laughs> I miss much? Not a great deal. Harmon's on the stand. Did you get that wire off to Pittsburgh? I did better than that. I got them on long distance. They're both here, Matt. You didn't tip them off? No, you'll do that. You'll be called soon. Might as well go in now. Mr. Savenik, are you a member of the Communist Party of America? I have been for nine years. My party card is in your possession. What was your purpose in joining the party? I joined it as an undercover agent for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I was what is commonly known as a plant. <laughs> recognize these volumes, Mr. Savetic? Yes, sir. Those are copies of the daily reports I made to the FBI. Please give us a brief resume of what you learned about the Communist Party. Well, I learned chiefly that its political activities are nothing more than a front. It is actually a vast spy system founded in our country by the Soviet. It's composed of American traitors whose only purpose is to deliver the people of the United States into the hands of Russia as a slave colony. <laughs> The idea of communism as common ownership and control by the people has never been practiced in Russia and never will be. Thank you, Mr. Savetic. There'll be a five minute recess. Where are you going, boys? Out to get a little fresh air. Get that later. You wanted in Pittsburgh in a murder charge. You dirty, sneaking stool pigeon. Ready for you, Mr. Blandon. Your witness, Congressman. Thanks. Thanks very much. No trouble at all. You gotta forgive me. How could I know? You couldn't, son. I was proud to know that my boy was all the things that I wanted to be. That you had the brains to see this slimy thing for just what it is. That you had the guts to stand up against me and all the world and fight against it. Even when you hated me, I loved you for it. 